I'm recording. So this is operating in the Heavenly Council, uh, people. This is part two. Um, this is uh, my friend Anne, and uh, this is the second time we've done this. Um, who we're going to contact in the Heavenly Council? Uh, the the six main uh, the uh, six main people we're going to contact is Moses, Mary Magdalene, Kim Clement, Bob Jones, Michael Jackson, and Keith Green. So Michael Jackson and Keith Green and Kim Clement. Uh, represent musicians um, and and Michael Jackson has been uh, being uh, mentored by Kim Clement and so he's becoming a prophetic musician uh, Keith Green was a prophet himself and a musician yeah Kim Clement was a prophet and musician so we've got prophetic musicians we've got a prophet who needs no introduction Bob Jones we've got uh, Jesus closest friend uh, on earth and in heaven Mary Magdalene and we've got Moses who rescued the Israelites. And, yeah. And so yeah. we've got um, the who's who of heaven. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, Mary uh, wants to speak through you and just uh, open open the meeting and, and have, have an introduction to both of us and say some things. So if you can right. relax and uh, say what she says. And, um, yeah, sure. I think at the end of what she says, we'll both be relaxed. All right, so this is um, Mary Magdalene, um, and I, I believe she's saying she was so delighted to be with us last week. She could not wait to be with us again today. She had so much to say, was so excited. She was brimming over with information and, and things that she wanted to share with us. Um, the thing that she wanted to share mostly with us was the intimacy she had with Jesus on earth and how, how that special fragrance that they had between each other and how we too can have that same fragrance um, with Jesus by being totally in love with him. Um, she was saying, she's saying, you know, how she wept um, when she watched him on the cross, you know, tears of great love and devotion, but knowing full well that um, he had to die for a world that was broken and, and uh, that the pain that she bore was almost too great for her, she's saying. Um, and, and in a sense, she, she wants us to understand some of that pain because of the pain that he went through and and you know we talk about intimacy with Jesus and we talk about it so flippantly today and and as it's something that's so easy and it is easy she's saying but there is a sacrifice and there is a price and and our precious Jesus her precious Jesus paid such a a huge price so that we can be um, with him and know him and and we must not forget that price um, and become flippant with the, the sacrifice you know she she feels for our churches these days you know even when we take communion and we we uh, sing the songs that we sing that we we don't understand the full sacrifice that Jesus paid and we don't fully understand the suffering that he went through at times and uh, and she knows it and and she knows it well because she watched it and she saw it and and she didn't run away from that suffering it was tempting you know it was tempting like uh, some of the other disciples at the time and understandably you know it was tempting to run away but she wanted to be that that soft place for Jesus to land to look I remember upon. I remember and uh, Jesus appeared to me in a church once uh, uh, beaten with with uh, with the whip marks and stuff, and he was uh, he was a bloody mess. Yeah. And he said, that "If um, if the people who are worshiping could see me like this, would they continue worshiping or would they run away?" Yeah. And, um, and I said, "They'd run away, Lord." And he says, "Well, you know, they're singing about my crucifixion. Yeah. And yet, if I appeared like this, I'd be running. Yeah. What what are they singing? And who are they singing to? Because I'm standing here." Yes, I'm standing here in front of them. So who are they singing to? Because they're yes. not singing to me. Yeah. If 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 they knew who I was, if they knew where I was, they'd shut up and they'd listen to what I have to say. And yeah. uh, so it's the first time I saw people thanking Jesus for his crucifixion, but they weren't even centered on Jesus because if they had any perception, they'd know he was there. And uh, so mm. I think people, this is what 
Mary's speaking about. It's become such a flippant thing, uh, the cross of Jesus, but um, it would have been hard to stand there. And I think uh, I, as, Anne, as Anne was bringing Mary's voice, I could see the crucifixion again. I think last week I could see the crucifixion. And so I just pray over everyone who's mm -hmm. watching that as uh, they listen to this and scenes are projected, I, I pray that the scenes are projected onto the mind's eye of people that yeah. you can actually see Mary at the foot of the cross yeah. uh, watching Jesus suffer. And Jesus is naked. Uh, he hasn't got a cloth on. Yeah. Uh, he, he was uh, put on a cross naked, and that's what yeah. the Romans used to do. Yeah. And uh, they took his clothes off. And uh, so we'll just let Mary continue. Also, I want to add that Jesus suffers in heaven. He, he hasn't mm -hmm. stopped suffering. Mm -hmm. um, you can imagine... Uh, watching one third of the girls in the world get molested by their fathers or men um, and, and them crying out in their bedrooms, uh, children of every faith crying out, stop daddy yeah. from doing it. Yeah. Um, the, the suffering that Jesus goes through is, is incomparable to anything that you could understand. As the father of all these children, yeah. uh, you know, Jesus still suffers. People don't realise and Mary's uh, face to face with Jesus um, and uh, she sees him cry, you know. Yes, yeah, yes. And uh, again, Mary is is like you, you're saying there, Matthew, that she she is saying about the suffering of Jesus in heaven and how it still goes on, and the suffering that and the the great pain and the anguish, and we feel that sometimes we're moved when we're moved by intercession, that we know his heart, but that is only like a teardrop. It's only a little little tear in comparison to the suffering and the depth of the emotion that he feels for his children and he feels for us and and for the the suffering world the forgotten ones those in the world that are forgotten you know and even yeah the, 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 there is great suffering and uh yeah yeah so so i'll just take over uh with mary's uh voice um i just want to tell you Anne, that um that I have been with you this week and you, you would have felt me from time to time with an inkling. And um, I, um, I chose you uh, because you're an incomplete vessel, you know. You, you, you've even thought to yourself this week, um, you know, I, I'm not worthy to be doing this. Why, were, why was I chosen? And uh, yeah. Jesus likes to fill incomplete vessels, you know. And, uh, yeah. and uh, if you were someone who believed that you're worthy of doing this, well, then you'd be the wrong person for us to choose uh, because you'd be puffed up with your pride and, and, and your, your own uh, self aggrievement or whatever the word is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you, you would just, uh, you know, be puffed up. And uh, so I want you to know that, um, that uh, it, it's not beyond you to uh, become as intimate with Jesus as I was. And it's not hard, you know. The things of the kingdom aren't hard. They're just contrary to our flesh, you know. And you don't have to spend six hours uh, with, with the Lord in the secret place each day to feel his presence. You can, you can feel his presence, uh, you know, making yourself a cup of coffee in the morning and his presence can come on you. Um, it's true. Yeah. This idea that you've got to spend three and four hours and five hours in prayer, that's okay if you've got needs. And, you know, Heidi Baker uh, confesses that she spends five or six hours in prayer and she says she can't get through a day without that. So that's preparation. And the same as Jesus used to spend hours in prayer each morning and I used to go out with him. Um, he, he, uh, he used to prepare himself and it was like his spiritual armor that he used to put on every morning and he'd get prepared for the day so there is there is um a place for spending hours with the lord in prayer and intercession and and seeing uh visions of of, of your day and being prepared for what's going to happen in the day but uh this idea that you have to do it to be in the presence is silly like the uh, holy spirit uh, can can uh, endow you at any time. Uh, he, the Holy Spirit can even have his presence on you in the midst of sin. Right? The Holy Spirit doesn't run away. This, this idea that God runs away when you sin, God actually leans in. God, 
God actually leans in and gets closer to you when you're sinning. Uh, yeah. Because uh, it, it's us that it's us that feel condemned and we pull away from God. And that's why Satan's always tempting us to sin. It's not so much to get us sin to break God's command. He likes that. But he, he likes the self-condemnation that we go through. And, yeah. and, and for a day or two, we pull away from God. And yeah. so he's constantly enticing us to sin to get us to break away. Yeah. And uh, so if, 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 if you're listening, people, get that one or two days condemnation down to 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> have, have the ability to be able to sin and then be restored with your relationship 20 minutes later. Yes. That'll frustrate uh, Satan uh, that uh, he'll say it's no real need getting you to sin anymore because you, you're totally conquering. Uh, you're yeah. ruling and reigning. Uh, so, so it's important to understand that, um, that it's not a formula. You yeah. know? Uh, it, it, the Christian life isn't a formula. There's things that work, but there's certain things that work for some people and don't work for other people. Uh, uh, Matthew's not a big prayer. Matthew, uh, it's, it's rare for Matthew to actually ask for anything uh, because uh, mm. he, he just doesn't... Uh, most often ask the, the only uh, most of the time we we get him praying is when someone else has got a need and he prays for that uh, yeah. so um he asked uh he asked a couple of weeks ago could he get a blueprint order each day and uh, he knew that would financially bless him and uh it went a few days and he wasn't getting blueprint orders and he asked why did it happen you know you say to ask and they said well, you're busy, you know, we don't want you busy each day doing things when you don't uh -huh. do it. We'll supply your needs, we'll supply your finances, and we have done. Uh -huh. um, that would just make you busy. It would be uh, too busy for you. Wow. Uh, so he, he did get to a stage where he asked for something, but he, he asked out of his own flesh and, and not led by the Holy Spirit. So wow. um, it takes practice to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. It, it takes um, a few books and good theology to learn to love yourself. And, um, yeah. and uh, you've read some good books, Anne, and, and yeah. uh, you, you've read some helpful books and you've got a good understanding of grace and not so much hyper grace, but you, you've got a good understanding that Jesus loves you. And yeah. um, it's out of that brokenness that uh, you'll be able to carry the prophet's voice. Like Bob Jones was a very broken man. And uh, Kim Clement got his power out of his brokenness. And uh, you, you find that Moses was, was broken, you know, living all that time without his family. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, serving over the Israelites, but not being able to talk to his own brethren. Um, yeah. So uh, it's a it's a fallacy that we're not broken. Everyone's broken. And uh, so I just want to encourage you, Anne, that um, if if you're feeling uh, unworthy, um, that's what qualifies you. And and it's that sense of unworthiness that'll keep you sharp. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you. I do feel unworthy. I, I do. I, I have a. I know I'm deeply forgiven, but I have a deep sense of my brokenness. So yes, I. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not really sure what else to say, but 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 thank you, thank you. I have felt you around uh, me this week, actually, Mary. I, I really have felt you and I felt the other um, prophets around me as well, to be honest. And it's something that's been a bit new to me, um, being able to feel your your presence and, and decipher the difference, I guess, between your different personalities. And that's been thrilling. It's been really exciting. Um, soon yeah. enough, soon enough, uh, this is Mary, uh, soon enough, uh, you won't just feel us. You'll be uh, saying like 30 seconds here and there and back and forth. And that's that's a really a, a, essentially uh, a prayer without ceasing is just always being in communion with the Holy Spirit, always yeah. in touch, always talking, always being directed. And so, some people think six hours prayer is prayer without ceasing. Well, you'd have to pray 24. You'd have to pray 14 hours a day while you're up for prayer without ceasing to be real, if that's your understanding. But um, Andrew Womack told a story 
uh, that Matthew heard that, um, let's just say his wife is Janice. He, he doesn't know um, Andrew's wife, but uh, Jesus said to Andrew, uh, if you had a choice between spending the whole day with Janice, doing the shopping and the cleaning and preparing the house and uh, preparing meals and stuff, would you spend the whole day with her or, or would you choose to go out to a restaurant and spend an hour face to face with her undivided attention? What would you choose? And he said, I'd spend the whole day with her. And um, then the Lord said back to Andrew, so why do you choose one hour a day to spend with me? And, yeah. um, and it was just, uh, you can be with me all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so um, it, it's important uh, uh, for people to connect w with the Holy Spirit. But once you've got a relationship with God and the Holy Spirit, you can connect with other saints. And um, so from time to time, when you feel one of our presence, just say hello, how are you doing? What are you thinking? And uh, it may just be like a one minute conversation, but um, it'll build your strength and your ability uh, to be able to communicate on these sessions that we have uh, in the future, you'll you'll have relationship, and everything comes out of relationship. Yeah, yeah. All the great signs and wonders come out of relationship. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so, the more that uh, you talk to us, the, the the greater depth we can speak in, because you'll trust our voice to be able to speak in that greater depth. Yeah. Some of the things we want to say are going to be hard for people to receive. Yeah. Uh, and, and as it comes through your brain, you, you might not want to say it. Yeah. Uh, but if you've got a strength of relationship with us, you'll say what we want to say. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually, um, I, I believe um, Bob Jones um, is actually here as well um, right right now to, to, to speak um, in regards to his... Um, his time in heaven when he had that that time in heaven where Jesus was talking about have did you learn to love and uh, you know he he said he's saying that sometimes that that is often misconstrued this this day um, and so Bob speaking now yes it is Bob yeah. Jones and it's you know there's a there's a sense that saddens him that 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 story and that vision and that great time that he had that can be sometimes misconstrued um, to, to mean something more than what it was or more than what what it was saying you know Jesus purpose on earth was to teach us to love and and to to accept and to, and to love but it isn't in place of Jesus himself and um, uh, I'm not particularly familiar with with this with this at all but the, evidently there seems to have been some sort of misconstruing out there that we only need to love pe love and that's enough but Jesus is the way the truth and the life is what yeah, yeah that, that's uh, that's true, Bob. Um, you know, uh, people like to when, when I say I've dealt with Bob Jones, people like to bring that story up. But it's as though it's the only story they've got of you, mate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand uh, that you failed that. You know, Jesus said, "Have you learned to love?" And you you're a great prophet with great runs under your board, but you'd failed to love and the 50 commands of Jesus that I go on about in all my books, uh, they're just the expression of love. Like everything Jesus taught, uh, yeah. everything he commanded us is just a way to love. Yeah. And it's very difficult. It's not just a lovey-dovey feeling, you know, going out and hugging people isn't love. If someone's walking into a fire, you need to pull them away from the fire. You know, if someone's saying something that's ruining their reputation, you need to take them aside and say, you need not to stop saying that, you know. Uh, love has got a hard part to it, you know, like Jesus turning the tables over in, in the temple. And Jesus didn't just do that once. He, he did it twice. Um, and uh, he did it in the first week of his ministry and the last week of his ministry. But unless you read uh, the Gospels in chronological order, you wouldn't know that he did it twice. No. So. He did it once and they went back to doing it again and he did it again. Um, and how do you provoke a fight? You know, can you imagine 
provoking a fight with the Pharisees in the last week of your ministry. He, he, he came into um, Jerusalem and they were saying, mighty Messiah and Hosanna in the greatest. So that provoked him enough. And then he went into the temple and tore up the temple again. Uh, so he, he was picking a fight. And yeah. So they had to destroy him. So not, not many people um, know a lot about me. They've heard me, but uh, a lot of people hear a lot about Jesus, but all they know is his words, but they don't even know his words. They can quote scripture. They can quote, 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 quote. Uh, Matthew was reading about six months ago um, that um, people who say they know him and don't obey his commandments are, are liars and the truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, then uh, they 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 say um, it's a, another scripture says um, uh, and and you keep his word and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free um, and uh, and they they're saying the truth will set you free people say the truth will set you free but before it says the truth will set you you'll know the truth it's keeping his word and. One John says, if you say you know Jesus and you don't obey his commands, you're, you're a liar and the truth is not in him. And it's repeating it before it says, uh, and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's saying those who keep his word. But they don't include that in their fact of what truth is. The fact is that most Christians don't know the truth and they're bound because they're not obeying Jesus. They don't yeah. know his word. They're not keeping his word. Yeah. And if you don't keep his commandments, you're, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. So when it says in Revelations outside uh, the New Jerusalem, outside the gates are all the liars, they're all the people not keeping the commands of Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so people think when, when uh, liars won't go to heaven, they think it's someone who's telling lies, but it's someone who confesses Jesus and doesn't obey him. Mm -hmm. So people know words. They, they know scriptures and they know words, but they don't practice it. Uh, yeah. 20 years ago, the Holy Spirit told Matthew, um, wisdom is the successful and proper application of knowledge. And there's a lot of knowledge in the Christian faith, a lot of knowledge and a lot of books out there, but there's very little wisdom. And wisdom is the application of knowledge. Christians know how to live a good life, uh, the proper life. They just refuse to do it. Yeah. You know, they know that they should turn the other cheek, but they prefer to gossip. Yes. Uh, they, they know they, that they should go the extra mile, but they don't. Yes. They, they know that uh, they should uh, give to everybody who asks of them, but they refuse to do so. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Every one of Jesus' commands, I've got four or five excuses why not to do it. Yeah. So they call themselves Christians, but they're not followers of Christ. Yeah. And so there's a really hard message coming down through uh, us and through Matthew now because um, he discovered, uh, sadly, he discovered in the last year that 50% of Christians die and go to hell. And um, that's just a popular gospel that once saved, always saved. And it's... Yeah. It's scary that um, there's so many big name preachers in the world and very few of them preaching the narrow way. Yes. And um, I sort of um, I sort of publicly repent for being on the bandwagon of saying nice things. Yes. And uh, it's not a nice place to end up in hell. No. And and I can report. Matthew's mother was telling him last night. Um, I can report it, it's over fifty percent of the church go to hell, and wow. uh, no one's preaching that. Uh, you no. know, like uh, why, why, why aren't the major preachers sharing that? Because it's not profitable to share that. That's true. It's, it's not good news. And, we don't even tell people that don't believe in Jesus that they're going to hell, let alone Christians that that aren't that aren't you know following Jesus. So. Yeah, so it's uh, it's um, I Matthew's uh, uh, mother was saying that Matthew's father goes for a game of golf every day with me, and um, oh. and uh, she was saying uh, the night before last that um, every time uh, he come, Bob is her husband too, and Matthew's dad is Bob, and every time Bob comes home, um. June, which is his mother, asked him, what did Bob say about Matthew's future? And, 
his father just um, fills up with tears and he says, I can't say. And um, wow. it's just these mighty exploits that Matthew's going to do in the future. And they're just so overwhelming for the father that he's told he's not allowed to repeat them uh, to June because yeah. June's too close to Matthew. And um, wow. he his eyes just fill up with tears. And wow. as I can't say. And um, I think, um, you know, Kim Clement, uh, Kim, Kim, Kim Clement uh, wants to speak and, and he, he says that, um, you know, uh, the world really needed us to die because the world's in trouble. Like the Christian church is in trouble. And Jesus preached, uh, you know, in Matthew 7, Sermon on the Mount, he that hears my words and, and uh, doesn't do them is like a foolish one that built his house upon the sand. And the rains came and the storm came and beat upon the house and the house fell and mighty was its fall. People have got no reckon, recognition that that's just about to happen. And um, there's, there's um, parables about Matthew's just coming into this knowledge. There's parables about the day of the Lord uh, uh, coming thief in the night when people don't know at a time you don't expect mm -hmm. and that's not the second coming that's not when jesus comes that's called the day of the lord and the day of the lord is a second coming of jesus but not in the clouds it's like a day of judgment he's going to yeah. come and judge first and uh, that's just on the doorstep this coronavirus is just the very start of, yeah. of it and uh, it's just going to get worse and worse and darker and darker and worse and worse and unless you've built your house upon the rock, which is the teachings of Jesus, you're in trouble. Yeah. And uh, and the, the church has got no idea what's yeah. coming. They've got no idea. And the persecution that's going to rise up, yeah. it's already starting to rise, like the yeah. liberal agenda. Uh, and it's not just a liberal agenda. It's just people can't stand her. People can't stand for hypocrisy too much yeah they they rebel it's like yeah. an uprising and yeah. the common people of the world are uprising against christianity saying you yeah. say we should do all this but you're you're hypocrites yes so we're going to do the opposite yeah and uh the tide is turning where it's going to be hard to turn it back especially with a weak gospel yes and pastors refuse to preach the gospel um it, it People, what, what do you call it? We call it fairy, uh, Matthew calls it fairy floss in Australia. You call it cotton candy. Uh, yes. But the messages in America are just cotton candy. But yes. I, I actually uh, feel the voice of Kim Clement as well. And he's saying that the, the days of the open stadiums are going to come where people um, are going, there is going to be great repentance coming back to the church, but it's not going to be the church that we know it now with four walls. There are going to be open stadiums and, um, you know, uh, hell will be preached and repentance will be repeated. Uh, will be preached and people will come by the thousands to know Jesus because it's the only way in this time that people are truly going to be saved because in the church at the moment there is not salvation true salvation is not happening in the church uh, it, it is it is cotton candy it is there for followers it, it, it's there for for money it's there for all sorts of different things but it's not there for for jesus and for salvation and um yeah open, open stadium great open stadium preaching where thousands upon thousands will repent and come to know the lord and they'll be dancing in the streets again and signs and wonders will erupt and it will be the, the great awakening that we've talked about and it will come quickly. Um, but it's not going to be in the church buildings. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, I, I, I love that vision. Uh, I look forward to, um, you know, uh, I, th I think it's going to have to get so bad and so worse that something will arise that will be authentic. And, yes. and 
people, non-Christians will recognize, well, this is real Christianity. Yes. This is what I recognize. And it, it's not like healing evangelists, healing is, is a good thing. But I, I, I think, you know, Billy Graham, Billy Graham saved a lot of people without any healing. Uh, I think that the word needs to be preached. The true mm. word of God needs to be preached. And the word of God will uh, convict and, 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 and cause repentance. And, uh, yeah. and uh, so I, I just want to hear you some more, Kim. Uh, talk some more about uh, what you see. Uh, I know this would be repeating what you've already said. but um, Yes, yeah, so there'll be dancing in the streets. There will be a great, 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 great music great, great eruption of great worship music that we haven't yet heard will be coming um, and there'll be the sounds, will be new sounds and, and that will draw people to repentance and, and the Holy Spirit is going to move in different ways than we've yet to see but uh, dancing in the streets and, and music and great stadiums and great preaching like the Billy Grahams and people will come to salvation, people will openly come from their hospital beds to these stadiums and they'll be so saved and there'll be miraculous 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 things and and uh you know um even as moses saw the great uh great people coming out of the wilderness even then or there'll be great huge amounts of people coming forth huge amounts of people just pouring into the streets pouring into the streets for salvation um Mm. Yeah, so uh, this is Matthew. Uh, so um, I, I'd like to, uh, seeing as uh, you've um, you've been getting mentored uh, by Kim Clement, um, I wonder, Michael um, Jackson, uh, I wonder if uh, you, you've got a message uh, for today. Uh, I notice, um, uh, I notice they cut cut and spliced you they don't really care about us and put a whole lot of coronavirus mask wearing um, black lives matter sort of footage uh, in your song um, so um, i'm gonna let you speak through me and then through Anne. and uh, i had a talk to you about it the other day um, and uh, uh, they were trying to say that that was your sentiment um, uh, in the song it, it, I, I, I I don't think that they should have done that in to your film clip. Um, and um, so what do you say? You say, well, Matthew, they assume that's my sentiment. Um, the liberal agenda will uh, do anything. And let's not be too hard on the liberals. And this, this is a message I, I want to give to Christian church. I want to tell you guys, this Illuminati, these, these elite, they run both sides. Mm -hmm. They run your famous preacher. Yeah. They they run the church, yeah. they they run the banks, they run the Republicans, they run the Democrats, and they run every independent. They're in control of fashion, they're in control of media, they're in control of music, they're in control of Hollywood, they're in control of all the power centres in the world. Mm -hmm. This idea, and excuse me for getting offended here, this idea that it's the Liberals and it's the Democrats that are causing all the trouble, that's just Satan and principalities working through Democrats. The yeah. Democrat motive, the, the average person who's a Democrat voter, is yeah. very much like Jesus. They want justice. They want equality. They want love. They want free choice. Mm -hmm. Hey, all you Republicans go crazy on abortion, but just as many Republican daughters have abortion. Yes. You know that, people? Just as many girls in the church have secret abortions. Yes. Just as many girls have boyfriends and have sex with boyfriends in mm -hmm. the church yeah. and have abortions. But they don't come forward and tell their mother and father because no. they'd be held to pay. Yes. And so this idea that the Democrats are evil, this is the two-party system propagated by the Illuminati. Yeah. I had a lot to do with the Illuminati. The Illuminati killed me. They had me killed because I was, I was starting to speak out. And so don't, don't be, you know, there's, there's a lot to say for black oppression and, and black people, you just want to be a black person and you'll see the oppression. White people can talk about it all they like, but when you're black, 
you treat it differently. Us boys, us uh, boys in, in, in the Jackson 5, we were all raped and molested by pedophiles in the music industry. We got used to being raped. That was just par for the course. That's par for the course for nearly every musician in rap. That's just what happens to them. You just got to get used to it. And uh, there's a price to be paid in this world. You got to pay the price. And and so don't don't be swayed by this. Republicans have got the answer. Republicans, you got one honest president in there who isn't aligned with with either side of the Illuminati. He's not aligned. He's got one honest, but he's not the savior. He's not the Messiah. You worship a Messiah you don't even know. Yes. And so many of you have accused Matthew of saying Michael Jackson's not in heaven. Why aren't I? I was seeking God. I, I, Matthew heard me in an interview say, what do you think of Jesus? And, and, and I said, I love Jesus. Jesus is my friend. And that's all he has to be, your friend. I said, why don't you listen to him? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm upset that they put Black Lives Matter in, in, in my film clip. And, um, but it's not that I don't agree with the message, the sentiment is that things are hard and uh, and things are hard for, for black people. But um, it's not so much just white oppression, it's just that the Jews, the white Jews seem to have all the money and they just seem to oppress everyone. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting that a bunch of Jews that aren't so religious uh, tend to oppress the world when they got killed by Hitler. They've turned around and become the oppressors the oppressor. themselves. Mm. Um, and uh, so I just want you to know that Christianity isn't the answer. Jesus is the answer. Yes. Being Jesus, it, it's not your job to preach. It's your job to be. Yeah. You know, the Buddhists have it uh, stronger. A Buddha, uh, an average Buddhist follows Jesus better than, uh, than the typical Christian. A Buddhist just knows how to love. They won't even kill a spider or a fly or a cockroach. They just won't hurt anything. And uh, yeah. your, your job is to be. You're, you're not to preach Jesus. You're to be Jesus. Mm. When someone slaps you on the face, you say, you know, you seem pretty angry. Do you need to slap me again? Mm. You know, when, when someone does you harm, they're just poking you to see if you're a real Christian. Turn around and treat them with love and say, mm. you know, I'm sorry we got into it yesterday. Can we start a new day? Surprise people. Go home and consult the Holy Spirit instead of just thinking to your own mind. So when Kim was saying before there's a new sound coming, we're working on sound and musicians, but we want a remnant. We're after a remnant. We're after the people who don't just want revival for revival's sake, but want to preach Jesus and want to teach Jesus and want to liberate the world, not save the world, liberate it. Yes. And um uh, and we we you know there's there was a strong move called women's liberation. Well this is this is gonna be a Jesus liberation. Yes. Jesus Jesus is gonna let the world stew in its darkness for a few years, let it get darker and darker until everyone's suffering, then he's gonna bring a liberation army. Yes and he's gonna come and liberate the world. And of course, 95% of Christians won't be involved with that because they don't care for anyone. Yes. The only time they'll start caring is when they start suffering themselves. Mm. So suffer they will. Mm. And uh, so um, I, um, I uh, sense that, uh, that um, you have something to say on my behalf, Anne, and uh, I'll pass it over to you so uh, Anne can speak in my, in, in my voice now. Yeah, so, um, you know, don't be surprised that there will be a great mocking coming as well, you know, a mocking because... Uh, This is Michael Jackson through Anne. Yes, yes, sorry. Um, Yes, there will be like a a mocking of Christians or the the people that think that they are Christian or even know themselves to be Christian. Don't be surprised by the mocking that will come with the new move of God because it will not look or seem or think anything like what even people have begun to imagine it will be like. Um, so, so, you know, there, there will be a mocking, just as people had mocked me, mocked that, that I could be in heaven with, with our beautiful Jesus, with my beautiful Jesus. They've mocked, they would 
uh, they would not be happy to to hear this but there will there will also be a mocking coming out of the church for the new um, church uh, that's going to to take place not church the new move of God that will take place but I can tell you that I have been working on some fancy dance steps <laughs> and uh, if you can see I've got my new black and white shoes on and me and um, Keith and uh, Kim were, were dancing up a storm and I'm teaching them to dance and they're teaching me to, to play the piano and there will be new music and there will be new dance and there'll be a great day of liberation. But he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah, that's, uh, so this is Matthew, uh, this is uh, really beautiful. Uh, and it's important to say who's speaking so the typist can type it. Yes. Sorry, but that's yeah. fine uh we'll be able to sort our way through it and even <laughs> if it comes to it i can just watch the uh replay and, and yeah make make uh but um but um michael wants to say that um you know uh to all uh, the people who uh loved my music um i was very much in the world i was very much writing hits um there's a lot of my heart in my music and I was very creative and I was expressing my thoughts and my ideas, but you got to understand, and I don't know if uh, many of you understand, but you got to understand that music is a business. It, 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 it's called um, the music industry because it's, it's an industry. It's, it's, it's a way of making money. And uh, so when you're composing a song, it's not so much the message as, as the rhyme. It's not so much uh, the, the message of the song. It's, it's whether it's going to be a hit and it's writing something to be a hit. And um, yeah. uh, in heaven, um, I've, I've, I've got two contemporary songs where I've won the best song for, for, for the week. And I've got two worship songs where I won the best song for the week. Uh, the last Matthew knew there was two worship songs and one contemporary song, but I've got a second contemporary song. And uh, there's two, um, for people who haven't read Matthew's books, um, there's two charts in heaven. Uh, everyone in heaven that's a musician releases music on, say, Earth Time on a Sunday, um, and uh, they play for the whole week and the whole of heaven what listens to every musician's new song that week. And on a Saturday night, there's a vote and everyone presses, I like that, 9 out of 10. Well, they vote when they hear it. They just vote in their mind, 8, eight out of 10, 6 out of 10. Wow. Everyone votes and they're all tallied on a Saturday night. On a Sunday, we have a concert and the top five songs play in the throne room and perform before God and Jesus and people worship to them. So they worship to the worship songs and the five contemporary songs. Wow. And it's five, four, three, two, one. And on the two and the one, um, uh, Jesus does duets with, with the winners. And uh, wow. you rehearse the song and you do a duet um, with, with Jesus. So, um, so the two times I sang, uh, I played the piano and Jesus uh, sang the song with me. Um, and um, it's really hard to win because you're competing against David and people who've been in heaven for 2,000 years and uh, everyone loves Jesus. And so the worship music is really high ca caliber. And, uh, and, and the contemporary songs are just like um, songs like Keith Green songs, um, songs like uh, Billy Joel songs, like stories. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I've won two of them. My first contemporary song was about Matthew and his life. And, uh, and it won um, wow. a song. And um, uh, so, uh, so uh, there's new music uh, coming for the world. And uh, a lot of uh, the, the, the elector, the, the remnant, uh, the, the new wine uh, are going to hear these songs like Kanye West and yeah. uh, Justin Bieber and, and some yeah. of the new wine. Billy Eilish, when Billy Eilish uh, becomes a Christian, Billy Eilish will come through with, uh, with, with some good songs and stuff. And just as every um, uh, musician is inspired, they'll just be inspired by our songs. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, have songs produced. They may be told, uh, Kanye may be told, Michael wrote that song or whatever. Um, but uh, there came a time where uh, they'll be able to taught how to listen to us and be inspired by our music and stuff. But um, 
there's new music coming, there's a new army coming, and uh, it's going to be exciting, but it's going to be dark. It's going to be... Uh, yeah. uh, Satan knows. Satan found out about two years ago that it was the last days, and we're in the final... You know, remember, it says in Scripture, he, he went mad because he knew his time was short. Well, yeah. he found out uh, about um, two years ago, and... Uh, uh-huh. And uh, so he's scrambling. He doesn't know who the Antichrist is. Uh, Satan doesn't know who the Antichrist is. He had Hillary prepared to be the Antichrist, uh, but he doesn't know his next pick. He's got a couple of contenders, but uh, he keeps on trying to get the Antichrist in, and uh, yeah. he failed. Um, yeah. So, um, so things are. Uh, Matthew's parents are sort of happy that they're in heaven uh, for for this, but. Uh, Matthew's up to the task. Uh, even if the mark of the beast came in, he'd be able to survive uh, just by giving people prophecies and stuff. Uh, but um, yeah. yeah, things are exciting, uh, but uh, they're going to be challenging. It's certainly going to be challenging if you live a compromised life. Yes. And, um, uh, you can't serve your flesh and God. Yes. And uh, and and here is is totally in tune with that, but. Many of your listeners and many of your people reading this book live a compromised life. And, uh, you, you know, like Melody Green wrote Keith Green's book, No Compromise. There was no compromise in Keith Green. And, um, and uh, so uh, with that, I'll hand, I'll hand it over uh, to Anne and she can bring some of my voice now too. Actually, this is Keith Green. I feel like yeah. That. Well, it's going to go to Keith Green, but I, <laughs> I um. So 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 Keith Green says something. Yeah. So I um. So Keith is saying, you know, that uh, his life wasn't to start off what it didn't start off as a life of no compromise. But the more that he got to know the the Lord, and the more time he spent with Jesus, the more his life had to became become a life of no compromise, and um, it did become uh, narrower and narrower in this in a sense in the sense that you know narrow is the road, and and um, it, it, you know my life became um, narrower in that sense because it became a life that I chose to live with no compromise, so my dear precious wife did write a book which was very very true to to my life and that was no compromise but it didn't start off that way i started off wishy-washy i started off weak and uh it was only as i became um more and more in love with jesus did i um, become more and more in tune and living in that life of no compromise it is Um, it is about um being in tune isn't it it's like a tuning fork is used to tune a piano or, or to tune something. It's uh, coming into the resonance of, of the Holy Spirit and having the Holy Spirit tune your life. So um, I, I want to say, as Matthew, I want to say um, that uh, it's not easy uh, to learn how to walk by the Holy Spirit and to tune into truth because there's so much error being preached. And so I recognize, even though I come across tough, and, and hard, uh, I am. And part of that is frustration and, and being upset with the modern teachers who teach this garbage that you can compromise your life. Uh, so thank you, Keith. I feel you got something more to say. I just want to encourage, um, this is Keith Green, I just want to encourage you both to walk the narrow, li- narrow road and don't look to the right or the left. Don't look at the things that the world are even offering you or tempting you because there is no good found in any of those things. You can enjoy your life without being compromised. And Matthew, as you said about the the tuning fork, there is only one note that is in tune. <laughs> There's not an, there isn't a note that's a little bit off and, and being in tune. A piano is either perfectly in tune or it's completely out of tune. And that is how your life is meant to be lived as far as um, that, that road that you're meant to, to walk on. It's either perfectly in tune or it might as well be perfectly out of tune. There isn't a note that's a little bit off and still passes for being in tune. 
um, I, when I was on earth, I, I spoke and uh, sung a lot about holiness and holiness is not something we preach about. We hear in the churches, holiness is not in fashion anymore, but holiness is still required of the Lord. Uh, it's a pure heart. Holiness to be holy um, is still a requirement. Um, Pursue peace and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Mm. It says in scripture. So that was Matthew. Um, so uh, Keith, uh, Keith wants to continue. You know, uh, so Keith says um, the 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 joy of the Lord uh, really strengthens you. You know, it's a scripture. The joy of the Lord is my strength. But um, I'd say very few Christians really experience uh, the joy of the Lord in in their life and. Uh, it takes, uh, you know, why, why, would, why would an owner of a company come and align themselves with you if you're lazy? Like, if, if you're wasteful and lazy, why would an owner of a company come and want to support you and back you? And yeah. um, so that's a good way of saying why would the Holy Spirit come and align himself with you when you're wasteful and lazy? Yes. And so... There's your answer why you don't feel the joy of the Lord and you don't feel the presence of the Lord. It's because you haven't even started on the very fundamentals of the Christian faith. Mm. And uh, There's so many people who've been in church for 35 years and they grew for six months and they repeated their thir 34 and a half years of stag stagnant living. And, uh, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know uh, about you. Well, I do know about you because I know you, and um, but uh, Matthew doesn't know about you. But um, each week is 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 growth. Each each week is going forward, and there's a battle to go forward. But it's uh, sometimes it's two steps forward and one step backwards. But there's always a continual growth, and when you're walking with the Lord, it's it's exciting. If if your Christian life isn't exciting, you're not doing it right. Yeah. And uh, there's always warfare and there's always competition. There, there was a lot of warfare around the first, um, uh, you know, um, operating in the Heavenly Council and there was a lot of warfare today for both you and Anne. And, uh, and you realise that once we started talking, uh, things eased up and uh, yeah. the glory came on it and uh, everything's right. But... Um, Satan's not going to give up without a fight. Yeah. He's not going to let go of the Democrat Party. He's not going to let go of the rhinos and, and the Republicans in name only. He's not going to let go of the judicial system or, or Hollywood or, or the music industry. Yeah. You're not going to bring this liberation without a fight. Yes. So you've got to be ready. You can't be, you can't be a pussycat going in to fight a tiger. Yeah. You, you, you've, you've got to be a tiger. You've got to be strong. And you don't get strong in spiritual warfare without a few battles. Like Matthew uses an illustration in many of his books that you don't become a general and fight, uh, fight Iraq and be the general in charge of Desert Storm. You don't become a general straight out of officer's school. You, you fight in a few wars and you get a lot of experience in battle and you command troops in different delegations and different levels of authority until finally you're promoted to be a general. And there's a lot of generals in America, but there was only one general for Desert Storm. Yeah. Uh, so if you're going to be a general, if you're going to lead an army, if, you, if someone's prophesied over you that you're a general, you're going to have to have a lot of fights. Yes. You're going to have to be battle-weary. Right? Matthew went to pay a bill today and, and a witch astral travelled and attacked him, right? He had to have an angel kick a butt. Yeah. Um, and, and that was just for going into a shop to pay a bill. You've got to have warfare. You've got to yeah. be experienced and not what passes as spiritual warfare. Matthew's read, uh, you know, uh, he hasn't read, but he's heard a lot of people in spiritual warfare and, 99% yeah. of what's said out there is, is, is will get you into trouble and it's garbage. <laughs> but um, there's real warfare and you've got to be experienced in it. Yes. You've got to be able to cope. And uh, the joy of the Lord will carry you, but 
very few of you feel the presence each day or uh, experience the presence or experience being directed by the Holy Spirit. And things are getting down to the wire now. You've got to, it's like, uh, you know, you see war movies where the radio goes down and they're trying to pull in um, bomb attacks and, and go forward, but their radio's down. Well, if you're going to go into this battle, your radio can't go down. You've got to be able to listen to the Holy Spirit. And you may think it's fine going to church right now. And, well, a lot of you aren't going to church right now, but you might think it's fine going to church and hearing a pastor speak, but you've got to hear the Holy Spirit speak. Yes. There's, there's times coming where if you can't hear the Holy Spirit, you're gone. Yeah. And, and so um, I want you to know, as you're listening to this before a book comes out, I want you to learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit and get connected with the Holy Spirit and start talking to God because it's uh, it's game on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what do you think so far, And This is Matthew. <laughs> I think it's all amazing. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, that the days in the playground from from what was just last said, you know, that the day, the days in the playground are are gone. Really, you know, it's it's you know that there is time for you know not that we ask for warfare, but we need to be able to get through these things and 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 to 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 take more ground in the heavenly realms. I, I mean, you know, to hear more from God and to be more in tune, you know, just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this is Keith again. Um, I want to say to you, Anne, that um, you, you've uh, fought a lot of battles and um, uh, there's been a lot of things that happened to you that weren't fair. <laughs> and um, you, you, um, you struggled with, the fact that they weren't fair for a while and, and some of them you still, if you think about them, they still hurt you because it was very unfair. And um, that's how Satan plays. Yeah. He's unfair. And, and it's not that you think Satan was unfair uh, because he's just evil, but um, there's part of you that think it's unfair that this should happen to me because I'm a Christian, you know, what, where was Jesus? And, um, Matthew's uh, heard someone say before, you know, where, where was God when this happened? And um, the person said God was in the same place as, as where he was when his son was crucified. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, someone says, um, uh, Matthew's heard before, um, whenever there's a test, uh, God's quiet. You know, where's, where's God when, when trouble's happening? But... Um, in a classroom, when the test is on, there's silence. The teacher doesn't speak. And, um, and so um, these tests that you've been through and these trials that you've been through were preparing you um, because you're going to take some hits in the future. You know, this is um, it just, just, just the warfare around today uh, was, was, um, was testimony to the power that's coming through the message. And, uh, and we've got uh, hours and hours and hours and hours that we can speak because um, the world has got ready. It's it's wartime. It's 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 game on. And uh, Satan, you can tell in America, Matthew doesn't see much news, but um, all all your cities are in riot. All your Democrat cities are in riot, and you can imagine how it's going to break out after the election. Mm -hmm. If they're angry now and Trump gets in how angry they're going to be. And um, it seems that these backers like Soros have got millions of dollars and they can finance these guys for years. And Soros and his friends have got a whole lot of uh, billionaires that are partners that are just pouring money into. These agitators are getting paid hourly wages to, to agitate. And uh, so um, it's on, but um, we serve a risen saviour yeah <laughs> and, and uh he he's he's risen he he's yeah. risen and uh i want you to know people who, who are listening and reading the book in the future um he can turn up he, he can turn up for you he, you know if you need him 
he can turn up and he's a valiant fighter and he he's he's a mighty warrior and uh he's a prophet and he's a priest and he's an apostle and he's a teacher and he's a shepherd and he's a lamb and he's a lion and he's a savior and he's a vanquisher yeah. uh, he's a very powerful lord and savior he's not just a meek and mild pussycat mm. and uh, he can turn up and turn in for you so um, you seek him you know get off get off uh, when you finish watching this youtube video and uh, put your head down between your knees and cry out to jesus and ask him to come and um, solve whatever's happening in your life and yeah. um, promise him that uh, you'll 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 tread on the narrow path and Mm. Um, and confess your sins and confess your errors and confess what you're into and ask him to bring breakthrough and ask him to make a way for you and ask him for the things that you need and uh, give him a pledge, pledge your heart to the Lord that as for you and my, your, my house, I'll serve you. And, um, and uh, but do it today. Don't, turn off the video uh, uh, right now and do it right now. And, uh, and pledge your heart to Jesus and say that uh, you're going to follow him. Just help me and guide me. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, I'll pass it over to you and you can choose anyone uh, you like. This, this is Keith saying, you can choose anyone you like. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, thank I you. I guess Mary would like to speak. I was just going to say, yes, I think this is Mary, you know, I think Mary just wants to to bring an honouring. Um, she she wants to honour you, Matthew, for what you're doing here and for what you've done, what you are going to do. She she wants to honour what uh, what is happening here between us in this situation. She honours um, the work that is going to happen in the future. Um, She's moved with compassion for both of us is what I hear. And uh, the Lord has moved with compassion for both of us. Um, not in, a, not in a, a soppy, sippy way, but moved in compassion in that he has seen some of the difficulties that we've both faced. And so is she, and she has been moved with compassion. And uh, she's moved com with compassion for the people that are going to listen to this. The people right now that will be crying and weeping because of the compassion that they're feeling from Jesus because he died and he died a terrible death out of great love he is not someone that does not love he loves wholly and purely and has great mercy and has great compassion and, and um, Mary is just full of compassion towards us and to, to, to the people as she had compassion towards Jesus. And there's a, a depth of compassion that is going to come, not just from the, the words and from the prophecies and, and from the things that are said, but the compassion that heart of Jesus is going to flow over the people as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so this is Matthew. Um, I uh, really love you, Mary. Um, I remember on, on the ferry, the time I reached out to you and you said you were the bride of Christ. You sort of, um, if, if if you could be human again, I'd choose you to be my wife. <laughs> I just love you so much. But I know you're my sister, but I, I just love you, you know. And um, uh, it, it's, it's true, you know. I think I met you about 400 times uh, before you came and uh, started spending each day with me. And, um, you know, people, people think that they can become close to Jesus by going to church and hearing sermons or praying or reading the Bible. You, you, you become close to Jesus by having him visit you 400 times and having 5,000 conversations and asking him thousands of questions. Mm. You, you, how, do you, how do you get close to, uh, how do you get close to, a friend, you ask them a lot of questions and you have a lot of dialogue yeah. and people, people are wrong when they think that they think they're close to Jesus 
when they haven't had a thousand conversations with him. And yeah. um, you, you can't get close having a one-way conversation. No couple would ever survive just one of the partners just speaking, the other one never speaking back. So if you think you're close to Jesus and you're not having two-way conversations, you're kidding yourself. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I, I've come to know you through a lot of conversation, a lot of time together, Mary. And uh, I just, um, it, it first happened, uh, and I, I said to Jesus, can he bring someone from heaven next time, and not just come alone? And he yeah. said, who do you want me to bring? And I said, oh, just let it be a surprise. Huh. The next time I went into McDonald's in the city, he was there, and he said, I brought someone. And I looked and I heard the name Mary Magdalene and wow. it was there with him. And I, I sort of filled up with tears and I said, why did you bring Mary? And he said, she's my best friend. I, I wanted you to meet my best friend. Wow. Um, yeah. And, um, and, uh, and so she just kept on coming every time Jesus came. And then um, uh, after that, we started meeting by ourselves and um, wow. we've got a long history and, uh, Every one of the saints, people, every one of the saints uh, in the Bible can be your close friend. But first of all, you've got to be close friends with Jesus. And, yeah. and, and I tell you, if, if you're not having two-way conversations with Jesus, if you can't ask him questions and hear him speak, you need to get my book, How to Hear from God, and start yeah. having conversations with Jesus. Because uh, I bet you've got 100 questions. Well, I haven't got 100 questions for Jesus, so I've asked them all. Yeah. <laughs> I, whenever I got a question, I ask him. Yeah. You know, I knew Donald Trump was coming in because I asked Jesus. I knew Michael Jackson didn't abuse a little boy because I asked Jesus. Yeah. Whenever you got a question, you know, what, you know, who wrote the book of Hebrews? Paul, right? It's just one question, folks. Yeah. I don't respect any theologian that says the writer of Hebrews. Yeah. He obviously doesn't know Jesus. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. I really appreciate you, Mary. And uh, if you want to say anything more, um, you, you're welcome to it. I just, I think that just Mary's just saying that there are going to be so many visitations um, from lots of different saints from heaven, and we, you know, you already have a lot more, Matthew, than. And does at this stage, but there are going to be lots of visitations from heaven, and um, and it's going to be party time. Really, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, uh, Anne, uh, do, you, do you feel like it's time to like wrap it up today? I oh, probably. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Um, they just came in and said that dinner's ready. So okay. Uh, it's um. I think it's um, six minutes short of an hour, so it's like 51 minutes. Is that right? Three, oh, it's, no. I, I think it's four mi I think it's five minutes over now, so an okay. hour and five. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so uh, it was wonderful uh, connecting with you. We'll connect yeah, you uh, again uh, during the week, and um, I'll um, I'll upload this and uh, and uh, um, I love you, Anne. And love you too. It, it, that was a really meaty um, session, wasn't it? Uh